Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Javier Benitez. I work in the strategy and architecture team in Colt. Um, and um, yeah, my presentation today is going to be about uh, how we plan to uh, introduce optical services into our on-demand proposition. Okay, and this is why I'll be talking about uh, optical SD and innovation in Colt. Okay. But before I go into the, into the material, I mean, just a very brief introduction. Colt is a business-only service provider. We have a global coverage, but our footprint is pretty much uh, based in, in Europe, uh, originally with uh, extens extensions over time to Asia Pac and to the United States as well. And, and this is a network that is uh, still growing, so we are investing uh, a lot uh, lately in Asia. And, and in the in the very near future as well in the in, in the U.S. So it's a network that is growing, and I mean I, I will not touch on, on all the numbers, but uh, probably our biggest asset is in terms of optic, optical um, uh, optical fiber deployment. We have close to 200,000 kilometers of that, uh, including long long distance metro fiber, etc. We have more than 900 uh, NNIs uh, to the carriers really to get uh, global connectivity. 25,000 buildings connected with, with our own fiber. And of those buildings, uh, uh, around 800 key data centers uh, carry hotels. Okay. Uh, and obviously we offer uh, from optical services uh, to packet services, voice, etc. Okay, so SDN and NFB in Colt, uh, we started a transformation program uh, in 2015 that we called uh, Nopitas. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a transformation program because what we want to do is really to uh, change the way we deliver services to our customers. At the end of the day, change the way they consume the services. Moving from a very static and manual uh, approach as, as the industry has traditionally uh, uh, delivered to a new world where customers can self-provision in real-time services. Okay, so that's really the intention. And to do that, uh, we use SDN and NFE. Okay, SDN just to give this uh, connectivity on demand, so giving customers the possibility to build connections on demand, change the topology on demand, change parameters of that connectivity. So for instance, from an Ethernet perspective, uh, change the VLANs, uh, change the bandwidth, etc. And then NFB being developed on top to uh, deliver value added, added services. Uh, and, and here we, we, we have firewall, we have uh, security, one optimization, etc. So the, the model that we are building is based on this idea that customers will, through a portal or through an API, if uh, we're talking about a wholesale customer, for instance, be able to consume our services in real time. Okay, be able to change the parameters, the fundamental parameters of that service, and uh, this obviously supported by new commercial models. Okay, Com new commercial models that uh, change the traditional one-year or three-year contract down to a one-hour contract. Okay, so that's the granularity of our on-demand proposition. Customers uh, can really go down to one hour and change the service uh, for the next hour if they if they decide to do that. Okay, so in this, in this context, uh, and as part of the Novitas uh, development, we've launched already two products. Okay, so these are two products that uh, are available for our customers already. So the first one is uh, what we call on-demand services. And, and that's the one that I will use to introduce our optical SDN innovation. Okay, so on-demand means that uh, we offer customers point-to-point uh, -point Ethernet services today based on this model. So that's really uh, on-demand, real-time proposition. So customers go into a portal. And currently, we cover around 20,000 out of those 25,000 buildings that we connect on net are part of the system. So you go into the portal, you see basically all those buildings. You reserve ports. You create point-to-point -point services with the bandwidth that you want, with the VLANs that you want in, in both ends, and you hit the button. You select whatever commitment you want. There are several models available, and you get the service created in several minutes, okay, up and running. Okay, so that's live and, and being used by our customers. The, sec the second service, so, and that's the one that we initially deliver, I mean, only because that was really the, the, the initial requirement and priority from our customers. Um, as we expand 
to other services, the next one has been SD1. So that, in, in my mind, is again a, a, an SDM proposition. Is Layer 3 VPN is moving into the uh, Layer 3 services, and, and that's launched as well. We launched this service one year ago here in this conference, and. Um, and it's just initially uh, delivering um, a narrow use case, which is the uh, hybrid off-net, where we have customers who are connected today with an MPLS link that is very reliable, but it's very expensive. They want to upgrade. And we give them the possibility through this uh, software-defined one proposition to add a public internet access and be able to dynamically balance and configure that on demand as well through a portal. I'm not, I'm not going to cover that. Uh, because um, the on-demand proposition is, is the one that is important to explain what we are going to do on the optical domain. So, so that's, that's our offering So, um, in terms of Ethernet on demand today. So this is live. Uh, this is being consumed by customers. Um, we cover these three use cases. Initially, we launched this as an inter-data center connectivity. So customers were able just to deliver services on demand between key data centers we connected in Europe. But uh, we've been progressing in the, in the development so that uh, we added our business on net buildings progressively. So out of the 25,000, we have today 20,000 of those buildings all around Europe uh, already available in the, in, the, in the portal, in the system through the API. And finally, we added uh, public cloud connectivity as well. So, so we have connection to uh, Amazon and Azure. And that is incorporated into the portal. So the proposition for customers, even though I have here divided into three use cases, it's, it's just a single proposition. They go into the portal, they see availability, they see data centers, they see on net buildings, they see public cloud in different data centers where we have connection to those public cloud providers, and they create an Ethernet point to point services in real time on demand. Okay, so that's a proposition. And Guess what? That's exactly what we want to do in the optical domain. Okay, so it's exactly the same use cases, the same proposition. We want to deliver that on demand between data centers. We want to reach our business on net uh, buildings, and also we want to reach uh, public cloud providers. And the only thing that changes from the previous slide is the fact that now we want to uh, approach and, and deliver that on top of our optical uh, transport. So that's, that's a proposition, and, and, um, and this is what we are working on at the moment in terms of <clears throat> initially working uh, through an RFI, consulting with our vendors, with analysts, and, and, and also uh, talking to some customers to understand uh, the use cases behind. It's, it's, it's not the same environment as a packet network, obviously, as an Ethernet network. So we really need to understand um, the, key, the key use cases and implications from a technology perspective. Just, just to put that in perspective of the overall transformation that uh, internally we call Novitas. Um, as I mentioned, we have two propositions that are already live. These are real products that are being consumed by our customers, as I mentioned, Ethernet on demand and SD1. But there is constant development. I mean, there is an agile development going on, adding new features. So for instance, in terms of Ethernet on demand, at the moment is only uh, in Europe, we are extending this to Asia as the next, uh, as the next step, supporting high bandwidth, meaning uh, 10 gig uh, access ports, adding new public clouds into the, into, into the picture. Uh, IQNet is our new next generation packet and optical network. We are also adding the on-demand capabilities on top of that. In the SD1 domain, um, as I mentioned initially, it was the hybrid a scenario, but now we are extending the coverage uh, to cover internet only, MPLS only sites. Security, which is going to be a key, a key topic as well, with basic and advanced firewall, all the zero touch provisioning, uh, etc. So it's, it's really uh, progressing uh, in parallel. So, in terms, in terms of uh, planning new developments, um, from the product side, we just keep on adding products, okay? So this is a model that we started with Ethernet, but we are extending uh, uh, to the optical domain, as I will explain, but also to other IP services. So the next one is going to be internet access on demand. Um, in terms of platform development, we are developing a unified and distributed NFE platform to support the requirements in terms of network virtualization. And, and some of the key requirements come from the SD1 environment. So one thing is delivering a basic layer 3 VPN, 
But another one, and, and this is what the customers are asking, re they really want to see value added services on top of that. Okay, they want to see security, they want to see one optimization, etc. So uh, we are just about to launch an RFP uh, uh, for the NFE platform to be deployed next year. And in terms of more the, the research part of Novitas, uh, one is the optical SDN that I will cover uh, in the second part of this presentation. And then uh, there is another one which uh, is uh, driving also a lot of attention, not only for, from Colt, but uh, by other service providers and carriers, which is, uh, I mean, it's, it's nice to develop our own products around SDN and NFP, but at the end of the day, customers will need an end-to-end -end service that uh, will probably involve more than one service provider. Okay, so we are trying to understand, I mean, what is needed in order to really deliver this inter-carrier uh, uh, type of services. I mean, we call this SDN, NFP, and NIs internally, uh, but uh, you may identify, I mean, the work that is being done by MEF as part of uh, LSO architecture, etc. In fact, today there was an announcement that the first Sonata uh, um, APIs have been announced, and it's a collaboration of several uh, carriers. Uh, so that's, that's also ongoing. We did uh, proof of concept with AT&T last year around specifically Ethernet on demand, expanding uh, between Europe and Asia. We are working with other service providers as well to do the same while we work uh, in MEF. Okay, so optical, optical SDN. What, what do we mean uh, with, this, uh, with this concept? So for us, it means in an ideal world, I mean, that's a definition, is a fully disaggregated software controllable optical network. Okay, and we, and we consider that to cover uh, not only layer zero, so the photonic layer, but also layer one OTN. Okay, so that's, that's our vision, our, our goal. In terms of use cases, we have defined in our RFI that we have shared with some, uh, some vendors, uh, two sets of uh, use cases. Uh, ones are operator or internal related, the other ones are uh, custom, customer related, okay? So o operator related, so you have automation, so really using this capability to improve our own operations, being able to automate the delivery of services. Um, Multi-vendor optical dom networks, uh, something that, um, uh, I mean, this seems today as, uh, well, I wouldn't say science fiction, but is, uh, is really something very difficult to, 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 to really uh, accomplish as opposed to a packet network, for instance. So there is really lack of standardization in this space. Um, and um, the third one is multi-layer optimization. So that's a very popular use case in the industry, uh, being able to um, have a multi-layer uh, control of both optical and packet and get some benefits from that, from a uh, planning, capacity point of view, uh, availability, uh, protection point of view. Then there is the, the second set of uh, use cases, so more customer related, and this is uh, where we want to deliver the same customer experience, as I mentioned before, that we've done for Ethernet. Okay, so we want to give customers the option to uh, do service flexing across the key parameters of an optical service. So from a bandwidth perspective, from a topology perspective, from a route on demand perspective, which seems to be an interesting use case for some customers. Customers would like to have the possibility to control the route that a particular optical service uh, takes for them for several reasons, low latency, etc. And, and we want to do that um, for any type of optical interface that we have, gray, colored, uh, spectrum, uh, and also being able to deliver different types of topologies, okay, point-to-point -point and, and VPNs. Okay, so th th those are the customer-related type of uh, use cases. Now, uh, another component is obviously uh, the technology one. Okay, and here we see really a lot of activity in the industry in terms of uh, trying to bring this uh, disaggregation and software control on top of the optical network try to make the optical domain more open um, across, across a, number, a number of areas. And, and this is something that, uh, well, I, I will not go in detail through, through each of them, but this is just to show that there is quite an activity at data plane, control plane, and API. Okay, at, at the data plane is, is basically trying to really make it more flexible uh, at, at, at many different points and also being more open uh, and software controllable. 
Okay, so this is where you see things like uh, super channel or go into a flexible grid of not being limited really by a particular grid in the optical domain or, or software defined modulation, etc. So there are numbers even at the, at the customer, um, at the client layer, uh, there are initiatives in order to add uh, these uh, this, uh, software controllable options. Uh, at the control plane, mainly uh, um, control planes that have, have been or come from the uh, from the packet domain that are becoming available also to be used in the optical domain and also to be applicable in this uh, multi-layer type of uh, of, of uh, uh, optimization. And then uh, a key one as well uh, from an API perspective, there is also a lot of activity. So I'm sure you may have have heard about the. ONF, OIF um, uh, transport API being available, uh, still not covering really the full uh, optical spectrum, especially uh, from, a, from a layer zero point of view, but it's, it's already available. And, and, and hopefully, I mean, this, this will be in the same way that uh, MethLSO is working at the moment and it's, it's, been, um, it's becoming a reality, I would say, on the packet domain. It, it would be really nice that the industry agrees on a single API uh, and I, 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 I hope that MEF, for instance, and, and uh, ONF collaborate in just having a, a, a unique set of APIs that we can use. Okay, so from, uh, from a high level architecture, um, uh, this is what we env envision, is, is putting really all the, the, all the components together. Okay, so at the application layer, this is where we have uh, our, our Novitas engine. This is where we have our business orchestrator that is something that we develop uh, in-house and delivers all the interfaces that are gonna be consumed by customers, um, are gonna be consumed by our internal uh, operations team, it's going to be offered through a portal, through an API, etc. And here, uh, e even though we uh, develop our initial API implementation, the idea is to converge towards a MEF LSO as really the reference architecture. Okay, so we are currently working on that as well. Um, there will be some sort of a control layer uh, that is going to have a number, a number of, of different elements uh, from uh, and functions like uh, path computation. Uh, topology management, etc. Uh, through, as I mentioned, hopefully um, a, a set of standard APIs that the industry agrees on in order to drive that, uh, that, that control. And potentially using also a number of APIs southbound. I mean, this is something that uh, is already happening. There are a number of protocols over there. I mean, I don't think this is going to be the focus from an operator point of view as, as we will play really up here and, and we will leave this one really for the controller to manage. And uh, in the actual uh, technology level, we will see the different developments I mentioned before from a technology perspective being applied. I mean, I, I don't mean that all of them are going to be are going to be there. I mean, some of them are far away in the future. Um, uh, but uh, I mean, we'll use whatever is available, and this is why we are uh, in discussions with our optical vendors. In terms of how this fits in our overall Novitas architecture, um, as I mentioned, we have what we call a Novitas engine. This is a business orchestrator. It's responsible for the end-to-end -end, uh, business service definition. It's something that we have developed in-house to support our Ethernet on demand, and, and we envision continuing and, and supporting uh, new services. It's responsible for delivering all the northbound APIs that are going to be consumed is responsible for talking to our OSS BSS uh, stack and also talking southbound to the different controllers that, uh, that are controlling the network. And we have obviously SDN controllers controlling our packet domain, controlling others, our optical domain, potentially a multi-layer controller as well, and the NFE platform that will appear as a, as a, also as an NFE uh, orchestrator as well. In this, in this NFE development that we are that we are driving, okay. So that's that's the high level uh, Novitas architecture. And I have one minute left just to go through the conclusions. Um, so packet SDN is a reality, uh, and it's a reality because I mean, as I mentioned, uh, we've launched services around this, and customers are buying those services, and we are getting revenue from those. So. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's something um, uh, clear. Um, 
so the next step in our plan is, is, how, is, is about bringing this on-demand proposition to the optical domain. And initially, we are really targeting exactly the same type of services. Uh, we need to understand from our customers if uh, really these are the use cases that they also want to, want to, want to get delivered. I mean, uh, an optical service is obviously different from a packet service. It's, it's potentially higher bandwidth, more static. So we need to understand really uh, uh, whether all use cases make sense or not. So what we have on go at the moment, we have an RFI ongoing. Uh, so we are still learning as well in, in, in this space. Uh, we think that the SDN journey may take a little bit longer for, from what I mentioned before. The optical domain is, uh, has a higher level of uh, proprietary, uh, is not as open, is not as a standard as, as a packet domain. So this obviously uh, will make it a little bit uh, more difficult. Um, we envision the, use, the internal operator use cases potentially to deliver uh, quicker benefits than the customer uh, use cases is, is really the other, the, the other way around uh, to what we observe on the packet domain. On the packet domain, we have started really with the customer related uh, use cases as, as it was really uh, easier to get that revenue. But still, uh, we observe customer demand. So we have real customers asking about uh, this type of service. So this is why we have uh, a target really to deliver our initial optical SDN uh, uh, proposition, at least a tactical one in uh, next year. Okay, so yeah, keep tuned because this is one space that uh, that we want to address in the in the very near future. Okay, so thank you very much. <laughs>